Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today is kind of a comical one because NVIDIA has a new graphics card out that never should have been launched. Like it is a terrible value that you absolutely, basically under no circumstance should actually go and purchase. And to be clear, it, it's a functional product. It's just the completely wrong price. It is completely oblivious to the entire marketplace. So today I want to talk a little bit about the GTX 1630. So to lead off, I want to talk a little bit about the performance of the GTX 1630. Uh, the short version of it though, is it roughly is on par with a GTX 1050 Ti. Now in the uh, video benchmarks that I've seen where people compare the two cards at identical settings, the 1050 Ti tends to win in the comparison. So it's actually slightly slower in gaming than the uh, 1050 Ti. And I'll link to one of those benchmarking videos down below so you can actually take a look at that comparison. But think 1050 Ti performance go into your brain and figure out what you would charge for that level of performance. Keep in mind, it, it's a brand new card, $179. That's the MSRP. What? For reference, I could actually order today an RX 6400, have it dropped off at my door tomorrow for $20 cheaper, and the 6400 is faster, like buy a chunk than the 1630. And sure, the 6400 has some limitations with its uh, connection to the CPU. If you don't have a, a PCIe Gen 4 capable motherboard and processor, you may give up a little bit of performance on the 6400, in which case I would recommend instead of purchasing a $180 graphics card that isn't very good, just go to eBay and buy something used for like $80 cheaper. And by the way, I say $80 cheaper because I can literally get a GTX 1050 Ti for right around $100. Or alternatively, if you have a power supply that can support a, a more power hungry GPU, then move over to something like an RX 570, which you can find for around the same $100 and it will absolutely stomp the 1630 in performance. Like the 1630's pricing makes literally no sense. And I actually think manufacturers understand how bad this GPU is, at least at that pricing. If we head over here to Newegg and we go to components and actually go to video cards, I go to desktop video cards, we go down to the 16 series and there's nothing like, you can't purchase this card on Newegg's website right now. It, this is a card that is launched. It is available. Newegg doesn't have it right now. And I think that's mostly because there's almost none of these actually being put out into the wild. In fact, one of the only places I could find one of these cards to actually purchase was not on NVIDIA's own website, which NVIDIA doesn't even list this card available. Uh, they have the option to select the GTX 1630 from their uh, sort, sort of options in their uh, online store, but they don't actually sell this card. No, the only place I could actually find this card is on EVGA's website, and it's a $200 card here. So my recommendation here is actually really, really simple. If you're looking for a brand new card, uh, the RX 6400 is a better card, uh, especially in a modern system in almost every regard. If you're uh, trying to spend about the $200 price point, maybe 180 or so, uh, and you don't have a system that's gonna be able to take full advantage of an RX 6400, you may wanna look at something like EVGA's B-Stock website where you can possibly find something like a 1650 for similar pricing, or a used 1650 would be a good option. Uh, if you're really just looking for that level of performance though, and you might not wanna spend quite $180, then head over to eBay and pick yourself up a GTX 1050 Ti. Uh, both the 1050 Ti and the 1630 have four gigabytes of VRAM. The 1050 Ti is gonna outperform the 1630, at least it looks like in most cases, by just a little bit, and you're gonna save a bunch of money by getting a 1050 Ti. And the upside with the 1050 Ti, of course, is the vast majority of the 1050 Ti models, if not all of them, do not require supplemental power directly from the power supply. So if your system can accept a full-size 1630, it's going to be able to take a 1050 Ti as well, and you're gonna save yourself quite near 50% off of the MSRP. 
Now there is this old adage that there's no bad products, there's just bad pricing, and that's not completely true. Like if you have a product that just doesn't function correctly, it's a bad product. However, the GTX 1630 is not necessarily a bad card. It's just priced at a very, very, very bad point. Like it should be nowhere near $180. I would argue that if it was priced right around $100, $110, $120, uh, it might make a lot of sense to people that are just trying to get themselves off of some integrated graphics into something that's slightly more powerful that opens up a huge plethora of PC titles that you can play at 1080p and acceptable frame rates. The problem is the pricing is nowhere near where it needs to be. So hopefully that's something that NVIDIA takes a look at and fixes. But those are just my thoughts on the GTX 1630. If you have different thoughts, go ahead and throw those in those comments down below. While you're down there, you can go ahead and hit that like, share, subscribe button. All those things are very helpful for the channel. I will let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I will see you all in the next video.